Hello and welcome to the third episode of the Knitting House podcast. I'm Claudia and I didn't expect to be recording another knitting podcast quite so soon, but it's only a few weeks after the last one and I already have quite a few things to show you. So let's get right into it. I don't have any finished objects today, but uh, I've got one nearly finished object and one object that's not going to be finished for quite a while, but I'm still quite excited about. Let's start with the most exciting thing. The project that I am working on the most and that I am super excited about. I already showed you this last episode, the Helia Jumper by Joanna Ang, which is my current big project, my current sweater. And last time I had just bought the pattern and I was raving about how well written it is. And I got some comments uh, from people who have knitted Joanna Ang patterns before telling me that yes, they are all actually incredibly well, well written. And so far I've found that to be the case. This is as far as I've gotten yet. As you can see, it's not very far at all. Even though I have been knitting on this uh, pretty much every single day, some days I get just one or two rounds done. Some days I do a little more. Oh, where's the front? As you can tell, I'm still very much in the middle of the yoke. I can't really stretch this out as far as it needs to because the needles aren't quite long enough, so you'll just have to picture that across here. Uh, I am about halfway through the yoke before I start splitting it at the sleeves. As you can tell, this is a raglan top-down jumper, but what makes this special is the cable pattern on what's going to be the sleeves. So the cable pattern starts right at the top of the, the neckband, and goes across down the sleeves and then continues on as you split the sleeves. Let me see if I can show you some details on those cables without losing any stitches. Right, here you can see one of the sleeves. To be fair, <laughs> to show off the cables, I definitely should have chosen a lighter combination of yarns, but um, that is just not very me. And so this is the uh, color I'm going with. I don't know if you can tell, but there's basically a really intricate cable pattern going on that's framed on each side by the raglan increases, which are done in twisted rib. So you've got twisted rib here and there, and then in the middle, you've got the cable motif. This, as far as cable knitting goes, has been an absolute trial by fire. Uh, the only cable thing I have done previously was a very simple cabled hat. So this is really getting in at the deep end. But the cables aren't even the first complicated thing I had to do for this jumper. This has a folded over neck band that is sort of folded over as you knit, which I hadn't done before. So you knit the neck band in twisted rib which you know is a really pretty sort of uh, striking feature of that but unlike for example this jumper which is the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit where you fold the neck band over after everything's done and then sew it together here you fold it over and then basically knit two together to fold it over and that's process took a long time. It's very fiddly. It's not really complicated as in brain complicated. It is very finger complicated. It's very finicky and takes a lot of finesse and a lot of patience to get that all done. But the result is really quite neat and seamless. So this is what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, there isn't really a seam because all I did was uh, fold this over and then knit two stitches together. So I attached the cast on edge to what was then live stitches. Yeah, it's, it's very neat. I'm not sure if I'll do it again. I mean, is the result worth it? It is very, very pretty looking. 
So I don't know, but that was a faff. Then I got to the actual twisted ribbon cable pattern. And like I said, this is the first time that I'd done any sort of more complicated cable. And I didn't even know, this is gonna sound, I'm gonna sound like such a noob saying this, but I didn't even know you could do cables that are purled. Here is the legend for one of the, one of the charts. And you can see there are some pretty complicated cabling techniques going on here. So the really simple two stitch cable motifs I've been doing without the help of a cable needle and that's been working out just fine but anything more complicated than that I use my little cable needle for and still this is very slippery I kind of I should have bought a wooden cable needle I think I can't quite remember which one this is if I find out then I'll put the name of the cable needle in the description box as well but this is a metal one and it is quite slippery so on several occasions this has just slipped right out of the stitches uh, leading to a moment of panic. I spoke about the yarn in the last podcast episode, but I'm going to talk about it again here. This is my little swatch that I made to show what the yarns look like together. And um, I'm holding two yarns. One of them is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk, which looks like this. And the other one is the yarn that I have named my street yarn, which I found on the street in a huge quantity and it looks like this. And uh, in the last podcast episode, I set this yarn on fire to try and find out what the fiber is. I am not really closer to actually deciphering the mystery of the street yarn fiber, but at this point I'm fairly convinced it's a wool fiber. But yeah, if you want to learn more about the street yarn, do watch episode number two of the podcast because I go in a little more detail about that there. And together you get this slightly fluffy, uh, dark teal color with a black marling effect, which as I've said before, is probably not the best to display the cables, but uh, I'm quite liking the effect. And I can't wait to see how this turns out when it's done. This is a process knit. You know, in the discussion of where you are, whether you're a product or a process knitter, I've always kind of seen myself a little outside of that because while I enjoy wearing knitted garments and while I enjoy the process of knitting, knitting has basically been a good way for me to keep my hands busy while I do other things. So I mostly knit while I watch TV or while I listen to audiobooks. And with this, I haven't really been able to do that because I have to focus on the pattern so much that uh, I just can't really do it while watching something, at least not something that requires any amount of attention. So sometimes I will sit here and have the TV on while something fairly mindless is on, but anything that requires closer focus I can't watch while I knit this. And so this pattern has turned me into a progress knitter because there is such a satisfaction in going through the cable chart and checking off row by row, putting a little tick next to it, which I do, you know, with a pen, putting a little row, uh, tick next to when I finished a row. Um, the yoke is basically a four round repeat when it comes to the increases, but then you work the chart uh, progressively through, which means that every single row is entirely unique. Every single round is entirely unique and not like any previous ones because there's, uh, well, at least I don't think there is many repeated rows in the cable chart. And like I said, because you're combining this four round repeat with the chart, you get an entirely new combination of stitches for every single round. And there is such a sense of satisfaction in going through that, proceeding through that, ticking things off and getting closer to the end of the chart or getting closer to the point where you split for the sleeves that it's made this jump an absolute joy to knit. Because the cable is on the sleeves only, it's also a perfect mix of you really have to focus on this bit and oh, here's a bit of stockinette. And because the right and the left sleeve are worked the same, um, you have the chance to do every chart twice. So you do it once, despair, 
undo all the stitches, do them again, count the stitches, pick up the stitch you've lost, ladder back to three rows before where you dropped a stitch, you know the deal. So you have all of the, the despair and the anxiety and the pain of knitting cables on one sleeve. And then by the time you come round uh, to the other sleeve, you've already done it and it's just much more relaxed. So this is so beautifully designed, not just because you end up with hopefully a very pretty sleeve at the end, but also because the process of it is so enjoyable. It is challenging, but not desperately so. You know, it's not all around cable. It's not all over cable. It's not the sort of project where you dread picking it up because you don't know where you're at, because you have to find your place again. It really is a beautiful mixture of challenging, interesting, with a little bit of relaxation in between when you knit across the front or the back to the next sleeve. I really cannot gush about this pattern enough. And even though it looks like I haven't done a whole lot since, uh, since I started it, because this is so intricate and I can only really do, I think I've done a maximum of four rounds on a knitting day, not more than that on 4.5 millimeter needles. So the progress isn't the most encouraging, but the process itself is enjoyable enough to keep me going. And I really can't wait to split for the sleeves and then to just be knitting those cables. The pattern tells you to knit the body first, but I fully expect I'll be knitting the sleeves first and then knitting the body last. Yeah, uh, I can highly recommend this, even though I'm not even a third of the way through this, at least knitting wise, I can already tell it's going to be a highlight of 2023. I really hope the finished result uh, lives up to that as well and that I'm going to enjoy wearing this as much as I'm enjoying knitting it. My second work in progress is a much less interesting one. We're not going to spend as much time on this one. And that is my hat that I am making to wear under my bike helmet. I spoke about this yarn as well in the last episode. This is a yarn that I got on sale from Woolworth for one euro. It's not particularly uh, soft. It's not particularly interesting looking. It's just a very basic beige sort of a sock yarn. I bought this when I visited my parents to have something to knit on the train bag. And on the train bag, I started knitting this hat on 2.75 millimeter sock needles. I wanted a hat that I can wear underneath my bike helmet. I very recently made a headband to wear underneath my bike helmet, but I also wanted a hat for those colder days. Now, of course, it's nearly April and those colder days are very much behind us. So we'll see if I get anywhere out of this when it's done or if, if this is going to go in a box and then be dug out again at the start of the next cold season. Uh, yeah, this is really not very interesting. Made a one by one rib and um, made the, what do you call this? This isn't called the body of a hat. Made the tube bit of the hat long enough that I can wear this folded over like such. And now I am doing some really basic crown decreases. There really isn't a lot to say about this. Uh, this has been my TV knit because as I said, the Helio jumper is just a little bit too complicated to knit while I'm watching something, whereas this is perfectly fine to knit while I'm watching something. And so, yeah, I fully expect this will be done by the next podcast episode. But you know what? There is something to be said for functional knits as well. Keeping my ears warm while I cycle is definitely something I need. The thing that I'm actually most excited to share with you is not a project but a oh what do you call them an acquisition yes <laughs> i love a bargain as i'm sure you've already picked up on by the fact that i'm knitting this jumper out of drops yarn and some wool i found on the street and uh the my acquisitions this week are just mm, you know when you get such a bargain you're so pleased about it you kind of want to tell everyone about it but no one gets it because no one understands just how much of a find this is, but you're going to get it. I know you'll get it, so let me show you. I went to the local charity shop. Now, charity shops aren't really a big thing here in Germany like they are in the UK, but there is one that's nearby, and it's a big, you know, warehouse-style charity shop run by a local charity, 
and they sell everything from furniture to clothes, bicycles, appliances, and they have a little corner of sewing and knitting supplies. And normally what you find there are uh, the usual assortment of straight needles, well, straight, slightly bent needles. You can tell that some, someone sat on it before. And I did find these sock needles in that charity shop. And they are really an excellent find. I love these. These are so sharp, so pointy. They are Pony brand, which I hadn't heard of before. Uh, so that was one good find from that charity shop. But I never actually found any interesting yarn there until just recently when I went and I saw in the wool basket this. A whole assortment of Rowan Valley Tweed. And by whole assortment, I mean, there were three of these uh, sort of like a burnt orange color. In the viewfinder, this shows up a lot more orange than it actually is. It's definitely a little more muted than what the screen is showing me right here. Three 50 gram, is this a hank? Is this a skein? Three 50 gram lumps of this. 350 gram lumps of the same, although the label has come off on here, but you can tell this is exact same yarn in um, this purpley burgundy color. And two in this bright sort of primary red. And each one of these <laughs> hang skeins, lumps, whatever they're called, cost me, can you see that? one euro fifty. I'm getting all excited again just talking about this bargain. So new these ones at least in Germany cost about 12-13 euros each so I got this for about a tenth of the price Um, yeah I saw that in a basket and I just just scooped it all up. I was actually shopping with my mother-in-law who grabbed some more of this in an off-white color that I graciously left her. No, really the off-white color wasn't really my color, but now thinking about it, I wish I'd picked that up as well because then I could have done some more interesting, maybe stranded color work with, with good contrast. Anyway, it's fine, she can have that. So my mother-in-law picked up three or four more of these in an off-white color. And the woman who came up behind us was looking quite disgruntled at that. But tough luck, first come, first serve. We were quicker and we got these. This armful of yarn cost, what's eight times 150? 12 euros. Is that right? That can't be right. I think it is. I think it is 12 euros. How incredible is that? This is 100% wool. It's quite a scratchy yarn. Well, scratchy, it's a bit rustic. <laughs> As you can tell, I mean, it's called Valley Tweed. Um, the, the tweeding itself is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's uh, very sort of subtle, I guess. So all the tweedy bits are, um, you know, yellow, white, red. They all kind of go together. And I am basically left with a sweater's quantity of color matching yarns that I'm now obviously thinking about what to do with them. One idea that I had for those is to make a um, jumper that I, that's just come out and it's called the, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading this off my screen because otherwise I will get this wrong. It's called the Viperidae Sweater by Clara Cecilia. And it's this really stunning snake pattern uh, yoke jumper. I love this. I mean, I cannot describe just how much my aesthetic this is. So, I'm thinking I might make that. The yarn is the same sort of weight. It's a sport weight yarn and this feels like it would be really excellent for color work. So I'm thinking I might make the body of the sweater from the burgundy yarn, um, have the snakes in the red yarn and then because I don't think the burgundy yarn itself is enough to provide the whole body of the sweater, I'm probably going to do the cuffs, hem and neck band in the orange yarn. We'll see if that works out. Either way, even though I'm super excited about this purchase, about this absolute bargain, 
I don't expect I'll actually start knitting this until the autumn because there are other jumpers I want to make this summer uh, that uh, have priority. Um, I spoke about them in a video called my spring and summer knitting plans. So if you're interested in those, you'll find that in the description box as well. Um, yeah, so this is probably going in stash and then I'll reassess maybe in September what I want to make with this, but I just cannot believe I got this incredible yarn for so very cheap. Um, I also picked up one other yarn from the same box and this is a Rowan Kit Silk Haze. So it's a, a silk mohair yarn, fairly standard uh, 30, 20, 30, 20, 30, 70 mix. This one cost just one euro. Yes, that's right, one euro for this. 25 grams of <laughs> silk mohair yarn. Now this color isn't quite my thing. I might double up uh, this because I think the the snake for the snake jumper I mean because I think in that jumper um, the designer also suggests holding a mohair double with the yarn so I might use this one double uh, with the red for the snakes and then get a black mohair to double up with the burgundy just to make that contrast a little bit bigger because for that snake motif you really want a high contrast between the color work and the base color. Anyway, the fact that this was priced as, at one euro and this is priced at one euro fifty kind of tells you that whoever decided on those prices has no idea about yarn whatsoever because I'm fairly certain that this is more expensive new than this but uh, I'm guessing either they just have a straight up policy of pricing yarns a certain way and someone looked at this and said, well, this is less, this is only 25 grams and this is 50 grams, so therefore this is going to be cheaper. I don't know. I'm not going to complain. And I'm certainly not going to tell them that they could be pricing this a, a lot higher and still sell out of it very quickly. That's my little smug moment over. Let me know if you have ever found an absolute bargain uh, in a charity shop or a second hand shop or on the street. Um, I hope my lucky streak continues and that I will find many more yarns for free or very cheap. That's all I've got for this time. Hopefully next time I do a podcast episode I'll be able to show you a lot more of the Helia sweater. Hopefully I'll also have started with one of my spring and summer projects. There's a few summer tops, t-shirts, lighter jumpers that I want to knit this summer that I spoke about in my previous video and uh, yeah we'll see each other then. <laughs> Bye! Yeah.